A time for thanks. Celebrating the harvest in Canada. Thanksgiving in Canada is a time-honored tradition. It is a day for families and friends to gather together. We celebrate the harvest and give thanks for our blessings. But have you ever stopped to think about the origins of this cherished holiday? How did it become a part of Canadian culture? The roots of Canadian Thanksgiving run deep. They are intertwined with the history of our land and its people. From the first European explorers to the indigenous communities that have lived here for centuries, the tradition of giving thanks for the bounty of the harvest has long been an integral part of Canadian identity. Unlike its American counterpart, which commemorates the Pilgrim's Feast at Plymouth in 1621, Canadian Thanksgiving has its own unique history. It's a story that spans centuries, shaped by European traditions, indigenous customs, and the evolving identity of a nation. This essay delves into the fascinating origins of Thanksgiving in Canada. We'll explore the early celebrations, the influence of indigenous peoples, and the evolution of Thanksgiving into the national holiday we know and love today. The story of Thanksgiving in Canada begins long before the country's official formation. It is intrinsically linked to the arrival of European explorers on these shores. These early adventurers, facing the challenges of a new land, found reasons to give thanks for their safe journeys and the promise of new beginnings. Two names stand out in the annals of early Canadian Thanksgivings, Martin Frobisher and Samuel de Champlain. These intrepid explorers, each in their own way, established traditions of gratitude that would lay the foundation for the holiday we celebrate today. Martin Frobisher, an English explorer searching for a northwest passage to Asia, held a formal Thanksgiving ceremony in 1578. This event, taking place in what is now Newfoundland and Labrador, is considered the first Thanksgiving celebration in North America, predating the famed Plymouth Thanksgiving by several decades. Samuel de Champlain, the founder of Quebec City, established a tradition of communal feasts known as the Order of Good Cheer in the early 17th century. These gatherings, aimed at fostering camaraderie and gratitude among the settlers, reflected the spirit of thanksgiving and helped establish a sense of community in the fledgling colony. Martin Frobisher's 1578 expedition to the New World was fraught with challenges. His journey was not just a simple voyage but a daring quest into the unknown, driven by the hope of discovering a new route to Asia. Seeking a northwest passage to Asia he faced treacherous seas, harsh weather, and the unknown. The seas were often stormy, and the weather conditions could turn perilous in an instant, testing the mettle of even the most seasoned sailors. After landing on the northern shores of what is now Canada, Frobisher and his crew found themselves in a strange and unfamiliar land. The landscape was rugged and unwelcoming, a stark contrast to the familiar shores of England they had left behind. Despite the hardships, Frobisher was determined to give thanks for his safe arrival and the opportunity to explore this new territory. The sense of relief and gratitude among the crew was palpable, as they had survived a journey that many would have deemed impossible. He held a formal religious ceremony, acknowledging God's providence and expressing gratitude for their journey's mercy. This ceremony was deeply rooted in the religious practices of the Elizabethan era, reflecting the crew's faith and hope for divine protection. This event, documented in the journals of Frobisher and his crew, is considered the first recorded Thanksgiving celebration in North America. These journals provide a fascinating glimpse into the lives and thoughts of the early explorers, capturing their experiences and emotions in vivid detail. Frobisher's Thanksgiving was a solemn affair, reflecting the religious fervor of the Elizabethan era. The ceremony was marked by prayers and hymns, with the crew expressing their gratitude through solemn and heartfelt rituals. The crew, having endured a perilous journey across the Atlantic, gathered on the rocky shores of Newfoundland and Labrador to offer prayers and songs of praise. Their voices, lifted in unison, echoed across the rugged landscape, a testament to their resilience and faith. They dined on salt beef, 
ship's biscuits and whatever meager provisions they could spare, their hearts filled with gratitude for their deliverance. The meal was simple and austere. Yet it was a feast in the eyes of those who had faced such dire circumstances. This early Thanksgiving celebration, though simple and austere by today's standards, holds a significant place in Canadian history. It was a moment of unity and gratitude, a brief respite from the hardships of exploration and survival. It marks the beginning of a tradition that would evolve over centuries shaped by cultural influences and national identities into the cherished holiday we know today. Over time, Thanksgiving in Canada has grown to encompass a rich tapestry of customs and traditions, reflecting the diverse heritage of the nation. Section 4. Champlain's Order of Good Cheer Fostering Unity in New France Samuel de Champlain, known for his explorations and the founding of Quebec City, also played a pivotal role in shaping the traditions of Thanksgiving in Canada. His vision extended beyond mere exploration, he sought to create a thriving community in the New World. Recognizing the importance of camaraderie and shared purpose in the challenging environment of the New World, Champlain established a unique tradition, the Order of Good Cheer. This initiative was not just about survival, but about fostering a sense of belonging and mutual support among the settlers. The Order of Good Cheer, inaugurated in the winter of 1606 in Port Royal present-day Nova Scotia, was a formal dining society. It was a creative solution to the isolation and hardships faced by the settlers during the long, harsh winters. Champlain's goal was to boost morale and foster a sense of unity among his men during the long, harsh winters. The cold and isolation could easily lead to despair, but through the order of good cheer, Champlain aimed to keep spirits high and maintain a sense of community. Each member of the order took turns hosting elaborate feasts, showcasing the bounty of the land and sea. These feasts were meticulously planned with each host striving to outdo the previous one, creating a sense of friendly competition and excitement. These feasts were more than just meals, they were social events that brought together French settlers and indigenous allies. The gatherings provided an opportunity for cultural exchange and mutual understanding, strengthening the bonds between different communities. The Order of Good Cheer provided a space for cultural exchange, where stories were shared, and friendships were forged. It was a time for settlers to learn from their indigenous neighbors, gaining valuable knowledge about the land and its resources. Music, games and theatrical performances added to the festive atmosphere. These activities were not just for entertainment, they played a crucial role in maintaining the mental well-being of the settlers, offering a respite from the daily struggles of frontier life. Though not directly linked to the harvest celebrations that define modern Thanksgiving, Champlain's order of good cheer embodied the spirit of gratitude and communal celebration that lies at the heart of the holiday. It was a precursor to the values we associate with Thanksgiving today. It highlighted the importance of sharing, fellowship, and recognizing the blessings of the land, establishing a tradition of convivial gatherings that would resonate through the centuries. Champlain's vision of unity and celebration has left a lasting legacy, reminding us of the power of community and gratitude in overcoming adversity. Section 5. Indigenous Influences Gratitude for the Land's Bounty While European explorers brought their own traditions of thanksgiving to Canadian shores, the indigenous peoples of North America had long held harvest celebrations deeply rooted in their cultures and spiritual beliefs. These celebrations were not just about the harvest itself, but were a time to honor the earth and all its gifts, acknowledging the symbiotic relationship between humans and nature. For millennia, they had expressed gratitude for the land's bounty, recognizing their interconnectedness with nature 
and the importance of respecting the delicate balance of life. This gratitude was not limited to a single season, but was a year-round practice, embedded in their daily lives and spiritual practices. These harvest celebrations varied among different indigenous nations, each with unique customs and rituals. Some communities might have elaborate ceremonies involving the entire village while others might have more intimate gatherings. The diversity of these practices highlights the rich cultural tapestry of indigenous peoples. However, they shared a common thread of gratitude for the gifts of the earth, the animals, plants, and water that sustained them. This gratitude was often expressed through offerings, prayers, and songs, each act a reminder of the interconnectedness of all living things. Music, dance, storytelling, and feasting were integral parts of these celebrations. reflecting the joy and reverence with which they approached the harvest season. These activities were not just for entertainment, but were deeply spiritual, serving as a means to pass down traditions, history, and values from one generation to the next. The Haudenosaunee Confederacy, also known as the Iroquois Confederacy, residing in the northeastern woodlands, held a particularly significant harvest celebration known as the Feast of the Hunter's Return. This event was a time for the community to come together, celebrate their collective efforts, and prepare for the colder months ahead. This multi-day event celebrated the safe return of hunters, and gave thanks for the abundance of game that would sustain the community throughout the winter. The feast was a time of joy and relief, as the successful hunt meant that the community would have enough food to survive the harsh winter months. The indigenous people's deep-rooted traditions of gratitude for the land's bounty had a profound influence on the evolving nature of Thanksgiving in Canada. Their practices of giving thanks and celebrating the harvest season were observed and respected by early European settlers. As European settlers interacted with indigenous communities, they were exposed to these ancient customs, incorporating elements of harvest celebrations and the spirit of gratitude into their own traditions. This blending of cultures enriched the settlers' own practices, leading to a more inclusive and diverse celebration of Thanksgiving that honored the contributions and wisdom of indigenous people.